guys, welcome back to the channel. So I've been in London for a couple of days, we're doing a bit of filming and I thought, well, I'll get back before, I'm going away next week, so I've got a bit more filming to do for you. But while I'm here, I'm gonna, uh, those of you who do know me, and those of you who don't know me, so those of the, you do know me, you know that I like a glass of wine. So those that you don't know, now you know like, I like a glass of wine. So I actually make my own wine. So I've come here to Creative Wine Making. I bought this Wine Expert Classic Spanish Tempranillo. This is 50 quid for 30 bottles of quality, really good wine. Um, so Spanish Tempranillo basically is Spain's answer to Cabernet Sauvignon with a plum notes and vanilla um, notes and things like that. So I'm gonna show you what how I make it really. So what I do, I get this, um, 30 litre fermentation bin. Well, 25 litre, 26 litres, 25 we're gonna make. Um, but it's nice to have a big fermentation bin because you can really get, stir everything in. So we always use one of them. So what I'm gonna do, after the video, I'll drop everything down in the description below so you can take a look at everything that I'm using as well. So, well, I've already um, used the VWP on this so it's all sterilized and ready um, so what i'm going to do first this is the bentonite this bentonite is a clearing agent for the wine so it helps it during fermentation and at the end it helps the wine drop and clear so we get a nice looking wine i mean especially bentonite really is, is a lot better for white wines because you can't always see through a red especially with a full-bodied red like this uh, but white wines obviously are clear so you can see them so you, it's a must for white wine so I'm going to pour in fact I'm going to put the kettle two cups of boiling water in first I am so there we go we'll pop that in that's about two cups there we'll pop the bentonite in don't worry, I've spilt a bit there, but don't worry if you ever spill any. It's not really a problem, to be honest, as long as, you know, you get the mainstay in. Same really goes with your yeast, etc., and things like that. So, as you can see, the bentonite, bentonite is actually a clay. So, it really needs a real, real good stir, and the hot water really loosens it up. God, hot today, I don't have to take my hat off in a minute. But do you guys really want to see the rest of my face? Drop that one in the comments below. Go on, drop them in. Tell me what you really think of me. <laughs> okay, so that's the bentonite in there now. That's to, um, if you can see, we've got no residue of bentonite in there. It's all right, you can even give it a stir like that instead of using a spoon. Sometimes we use a paddle as well because it's got all the holes in the paddle that aerate all the liquid. But I've just opted for a spoon because it's the first thing I put my hand on. So next, we're gonna put the juice. Okay, so here's the juice. I've got another sachet behind it. They go in at the end, they do, so. Just gonna pop that top on. When, if you make a classic wine, one of these, um, so you just have to flick this top off here with a knife. I've pre-done it because I didn't want to look stupid on video. Who does? Okay, so I'm just gonna start. I'm gonna add some more. I'm gonna add another kettle full of boiling water after I've done this. Just to, so that juice loosens up because it's thick, gloopy juice and it's because it's high quality. Let's get that in there. So that's going in there, just like that. So, and we're going to stir that in and then we're going to top it up to 25 26 litres of cold water but then we're going to take a hydrometer reading let's see where we are so right guys we are all topped up now topped up to 25 litres with cold water the reason i've done it that far up is because of the quality of this juice so uh, it's nice thick juice no sugar in it, it's all grape juice. So I've got a little bit more, so I'll probably get a few more bottles out of it. So if the camera could come a little bit more closer in. You can't smell that, but I'll tell you something, if you could, absolutely. Oh, 
it's going up their nostrils. Absolutely beautiful. So we're going to take a hydrometer reading. Your hydrometer reading now has got to be 1,080 to 1,100. So just drop that in now. If the camera can get a little bit further into that, and see. And if you can just see, we're actually bang on. At the juice, we're about 1,090. So we're actually being in the middle. It's absolutely bang on. So that's all there is to do. It always remember to use a hydrometer when you're making wine, because your starting gravity is just is the most important thing when it comes to making the wine. So next, let's take a look at these. These are oak chippings. These are these are these are now with these are heavy medium heavy blended oak chippings they give the these give the wine lots and lots of body all we do if you can just take a look at them just, i'm going to drop them in anyway so can you get them right them there like that it's not part of a tree so don't think that we're not showing we're not throwing anything in the wine these have probably been toasted at some point or something like that so and then we're going to put in this yeast but first what we'll do getting a bit windy we're going to stir these in nice and slow and then at the end when the wine's done all we do is use something like a muslin cloth over the siphon tube filter the wine and take all these out because we don't want to drink any of them but purely for to give the wine body and flavour so then we're going to use this top quality wine yeast it's an EC treble 1.8 Lalvin wine yeast it's probably one of the most quality wine yeasts around so we're going to do that that's the yeast in give it another little stir around don't need to give it too much of a stir now that's all you need to do so we're going to snap the lid on all the way around i'm going to put this airlock don't forget always fill your airlock half up or two quarter three quarters of the way up whatever you want with water and you'll just see it as soon as fermentation started you most probably, not always, because sometimes gas can escape through the lid. But 75% of the time, you'll see your airlock bubbling away and you'll know it's fermented. And to be honest, that's all there is to it. There's nothing to it. So if I can do it, you can do it. So don't, just remember, subscribe to my channel to see more of these. I'll see you guys in the next one.